Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on your time zone and depending on when you are watching this. It is Wednesday, the 8th of July, 2020, already halfway through most people's working week. I'm James Innes, and this is my YouTube show, The Jobs Guru. I'm delighted to see you here for today's episode. I extend a very warm welcome to all those who have subscribed since the last episode. And if you haven't yet subscribed, then please do think about subscribing so you don't miss out on the next episode. In today's show, I'm going to be covering a question from one of my viewers. And next, in the interview question series, I'm going to be asking, what shapes are best for manholes? Belay me. Answers on a postcard, please. If you have any questions or comments as you watch, then do please let me have them below. And if you like what you see, then do please hit that YouTube thumbs up. So, on to that question from one of my viewers. Today's question has been sent in by Louise in Guildford. Dear James, I have been looking for a new job for a few months now and was in a really strong position. I didn't need a new job as such. I just want a new challenge. I had received a couple of offers already, but they didn't quite tick all the boxes, so I turned them down and continued my search. Then came coronavirus, and my once strong position is completely the opposite. Now I do need a new job, and the companies that I turned down not long ago are still hiring. How can I best approach them now that the tables have turned? Can I still negotiate with them to get all of those boxes ticked? Well, Louise in, um, in Guildford, just up the road from me, in fact, whether or not you approach those companies again now, uh, re it really does depend on how you handle the rejection of the offers they previously made you. I always advise my clients never to burn any bridges in their career, whether that is with a former employer or, or a prospective one. Um, in fact, burning bridges is best avoided altogether, even in your personal life. But if you handled the original rejection professionally and appropriately, and I'm, uh, I'm sure you probably did, then there is absolutely nothing wrong with you approaching them again now to explain the situation. Try to reach out specifically to the, the people who interviewed you uh, and all those who, who put the formal offer to you if you can. I have to be frank here though, you need to be prepared to compromise on some of those boxes that you wanted them to tick. As you rightly surmise, um, your negotiating power has decreased not increased as a result of this whole coronavirus crisis. You really must focus on what your priorities are now because there are going to be a lot of other people in the same position as you. We're entering a, a, sat a very saturated jobs market, very few jobs, very high levels of unemployment. I have to say that uh, in general, a little tact and diplomacy and common courtesy can really go a long way. It never hurts to be as polite as pie with absolutely everyone, especially people you want something out of. Now, I'm always open to interesting new questions from my viewers, so if you have a workplace, jobs, careers, or employment-related question for me, then do please type it into that comment section below, and I may well feature it in a future episode of this show. And if I do, then one of my limited edition collector's item Jobs Guru coffee mugs will be yours. I know you want one. You know you want one. Now, as well as heading up James in the Stock Group, I'm also the UK's best-selling careers author, and amongst my titles is the Interview Question and Answer Book. Got a copy to hand here. There we go. It is, of course, available in all good bookshops, or if you'd like a signed copy from yours truly, then there's a link in the description of this video. Each Wednesday, at the moment, I'm taking questions from that book and looking at how to answer them, and at the moment, I'm taking those questions from the chapter entitled Weird and Wonderful Questions. Today's question, what shapes are best for manholes? Similar questions um, might include, describe the action of a, a corkscrew on a cork. Um, let's see what else can I think of. Uh, why are manholes circular? Why aren't, why aren't manholes covered square? Well, some are actually. Um, but back to the question in hand. What shapes are best for manholes? This might seem a bit of a, an irrelevant question, you know. Uh, it might, you might think it's just a, a, a ridiculous and wacky question, but it is in fact, you know, um, an opportunity for the interviewer to test the candidate, that's you, your ability to structure an answer and apply logical reasoning. Now, it's not just a silly question. Questions like this were initially used when interviewing candidates for positions within technical sectors, you know, like uh, computer programming, engineering, etc. But they've become increasingly popular when hiring staff for any positions where analytical skills, logical thinking and problem solving are, are, are key to the role. 
As with similar questions, it's not so much about getting the answer absolutely right, but more about taking a step-by-step -step logical approach. You will want to think out loud when you give the answer, so the interviewer can, can follow your thought pattern. So these type of answers can be a little long-winded and detailed, but that's, that's actually what the interviewer wants. So, so how to answer? Well, most manhole covers are obviously round. So your answer should perhaps be you know, exploring and comparing other shapes. Uh, you may want to think about the practical aspects of handling a manhole cover if you had to work with them yourself, you know, moving them, placing them correctly over the hole, etc. You can also consider what could go wrong when handling the cover. What if it was accidentally dropped, you know, or if you fall into the hole. If you then start comparing different shapes, circular, square, triangular, hexagonal, don't get carried away, James. Well, you're likely to see that whoever designed <laughs> Who designed manhole cover in the first place? They knew what they were doing. Okay, round is generally quite good. You know. um, mind you, you would be surprised to know how good a manhole cover, uh, an equilateral triangle, would make. You know, they're just rather difficult to roll. Boom, boom. Sorry. Anyway, as usual, I have plucked. Don't give up the day job, James. As usual, I have plucked a little example from my book for you. So, wrong piece of paper. Well, most manhole covers are round, aren't they? So the chances are that that is the best shape. The question is, why? If I had to work with them on a daily basis, then I would like them to be as practical to handle as possible. I guess that if I had to replace them as part of my job, I would prefer a round one that I could lift off my truck and then roll over to the hole rather than having to need a colleague to help me carry it. I would also like the workplace to be safe. So if one was dropped near the hole and I was inside it, I would like to know that it couldn't fall down through the hole and hit me. Mathematically, a square shape can fall into a square hole diagonally, so the round one would be safer. When my job was done, I would like the cover to fit back easily, and round shapes always fit and can be screwed tight and locked by turning them. So yes, it seems that round is indeed best. Although there are some small plastic ones. Small, light plastic ones, okay? Generally, big manhole, you want something round. Anyway, I digress. Um, <coughs> so. That's just an example answer from my book, of course. I'm currently updating that book, working on a brand new edition, the third edition. So if you have any interview questions which you think I should be considering for possible inclusion, I would love to hear from you. Do please let me know in the comment section below. And if I use your question, then obviously there will be a complimentary signed copy of that new edition for you. I may even throw a free interview coaching session with me, if you like, the man who literally wrote the book on interviews. And of course, uh, if you wish, you can always just pop along and book a section, uh, session at jameslist.group. So now, we're not far from the end of today's show. Uh, remember, this show is Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday pretty much each and every week. And I'll be back tomorrow, uh, Thursday, for the final show of the week. Just two more things. First, I'm going to squeeze in some routine but important requests. Do please check me out on social media and connect, follow or otherwise stalk me. But please don't troll me. Life is too short for trolls. Any questions or comments about this episode, about the show in general, about life, the universe, uh, Calpy Rock on the Costa Blanca, whatever, do please let me have them below. Tap, 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 below in the comment section. If you like this episode, hit it with YouTube thumbs up. Maybe think about subscribing, ringing that bell. So you can be notified about uh, the next episode. If you've already done all of that, then I thank you. Finally, what is happening in the next episode? Well, in Thursday's show, I'm going to be looking at the week's workplace news. I do hope you'll tune in. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye.